Here's the uh, Montgomery Ward's machine I just picked up from the thrift store today. Um, it is completely seized. It, it doesn't turn at all. See, if I release the clutch, then it turns. So um, I don't know anything about a Mon Montgomery Ward's machine. It says it's made in Japan. It's a foot pedal. It's got a 0.75 amp motor on it, belt drive, free arm, which is nice. I got uh, another free arm machine over there, a Kenmore. Um, for comparison, I, I weighed this machine without the foot pedal. It's 19 pounds. That machine without the foot pedal is 25 and a half pounds. So. There's a six and a half pound difference, and that pretty much will tell you that this probably has some plastic gears. That machine there is all steel, every every gear in there. And um, the lighter they are, the more plastic they have. But price was right. It's a good project on a cold day. We'll take it apart and uh, see what we got. If uh, nothing else, if, it, if it's completely seized and broke, I got myself a foot pedal. And it's probably a, there's a bobbin case in there I made sure of, and and there's a motor. So I mean, you can't go wrong for for what little I paid for it. So, anyways, we'll uh, we'll get going on this thing and see what uh, what it's like. Again, it's a Montgomery Ward model. Um, it's a UHT J1414. So I don't know who made these. Um, it does have a made in Japan. I don't know what she's digging for, but um, that's my little German short hair, Nora. She's gonna be, yeah, she's gonna be six months old, and she's pretty annoying. Um, so yeah, it's oh look at that, look at that. The, the, that's how that folds out. I guess we open that I did open that up at the at the junk store there to make sure I had a bobbin case so that's there and the parts are there oh see there's some plastic right there already uh. <laughs> but yeah it's an it's a neat looks like a neat little machine for uh imagine this must fold out too oh maybe there's something in here this looks like a little is this a little case you, you you'd think it would be looks like there's hinges Hmm. Or not. We'll have to we'll have to look into that. It looks like it looks like it should open. I would certainly have made this so you could put something in there, but probably not. Alright, well we'll uh we'll get uh, taking it apart. So it looks like to access the gearing and stuff underneath, since this, there's no real bottom plate you have to take out, looks like there's three screws, bigger screws here, here, and here to take off. So we'll, we'll do that. And uh, I just have it sitting on this piece of foam here. And then... Probably is a way to take off. Looks like there's a couple of screws right down there to pull off under here because I want to get to that gear case, the, uh, the the oscillating the shuttle gear case. That's going to be the critical thing. If that's a plastic gear, then then she's probably not uh, not not that great of a machine. Um, I guess I can flip it over here, and it can you can already see there's a plastic gear. Set this down. Yeah. But right away, as soon as I took the top off, that's a plastic gear, metal worm gear on the main drive. This little cam here for the uh, for the stitch zigzag. 
that's plastic so you know there's obviously some plastic here um that that would be the most critical that doesn't look worn too bad at all um so but she is seized so i'm gonna have to really get some oil all throughout here obviously um but we'll uh, we'll delve into the bottom and see what that's like. So yeah, we got the uh, the bottom off here. That piece came right off, and lo and behold, our hook timing gear is metal, and so is this worm gear here. That's that's good news. I will be taking that old grease off. Let's see if I can focus here. I'm using my oh, where's my little focus? I'm using my Nikon P six ten. So it's, there we go. Look at that. Um, so that that oscillating gear there, the half gear and then the worm those are pretty critical because that's oscillates the shuttle hook back and forth. And if that is worn out or skips a tooth, it, the thing's out of time and Basically, the machine shot, I and mean, you can people do replace those. But uh, okay, let's see if I can figure out how to focus this thing. So other than that, yeah, um, I'll, I can get get to oiling everything and, and greasing everything down. And all right, we got her going. This is how I usually do my. I always wear some goggles because uh, spraying with these little straws. That stuff can go shooting up. Nora, Nora. That dog is really my helper. This is my lighting uh, deal here. I got, I got a little floodlight on a roller chair. Um, so yeah, we actually got her turning here. It was really gummed up and I soaked it and soaked it and just slowly worked it back and forth, but we got movement. And we're gonna have to do a lot more lubing and soaking and taking things apart, but uh, uh, the the feed dog drop here release that there's a little bullet right there kind of similar to the Kenmore it's a little thing a bullet that shoots in that locks the feed dogs up or down that thing is completely oh those are always that's always the seems like the big problem on Kenmore's as well when they're stuck that's the one thing people are like oh the, the only souls in reverse or the feed dogs won't release and that been my experience too on that and that Kenmore there, and I have another one and another one, but that has been the the stickiest point, not the most major point, but yeah, I think it'll, everything looks like it's not too worn. Like I say, there's a few plastic pieces in here, just, that's what they did to lighten them up. I'll see what year this is. This probably could be late 70s, I'm going to say probably 80s, an 80s machine. But I think it'll it'll clean up nice and it'll be a good little sewer for for somebody who's just doing normal stuff and not building boat covers and leather sheaths like I do with my Kenmores. But all right, so far so good. Nora, Nora, we have made some progress, all right. So it looks like we really got this thing nice and loose now to the point where I I plugged it in. Put the foot back on just to see um just to check those feed dogs i got the feed dog freed from the bullet just a lot of tri flow but we have this situation it's going backwards to stitch stitch length it's not really doing anything so that this is the reverse button so clearly it's only sewing in reverse right now which all right, so we had everything pretty much freed up, and uh, it was not, it was only sewing backwards, so that's usually a feed dog issue. And kind of figured out it was a little piece right here that we just kept working up. So I'm hoping that I got it. I can see now the, the actual reverse button is actually doing something over there and I can see if I can zoom in here 
Look at that. Zooming in. You can kind of see the feed dogs um, moving. So I'm hoping that'll do it. So, all right. Hopefully we got. Um, I, I put the the foot back on, and uh, here comes my helper mate, Nora. Um, we're gonna power it up and see. I have it at eight stitches per inch, straight stitch. So, all right, it's going forward. We'll hit the reverse button, going backwards, forward. And then we'll shorten up the stitch length, and it looks like, oh yeah, shortening it up. It looks like it works. That worked, excellent. Give it a final greasing and oiling. And um, yeah, Nora, thanks for your help. Been quite the helper today. Gonna chew on the trolling motor, lower unit. Good. So yeah, I'll probably um, rem oil. I use that. That's a that's a good thin synthetic gun oil that works really good in cold weather, warm weather. But uh, I know that stuff's pretty good. Tri float in itself is good. It's got a little bit of solvent in it. I usually use a product called Gun Scrubber. And that is just a pure solvent, and that you would definitely re-lubricate after you're done using that, because that just strips it right down to metal. But that, if something's really gummed up, those feed dog drop bullets, they get gummed up because it's a little cylinder. Stuff can really get gunked in there. That's a good product to use. And then uh, I'll probably brush a little bit of synthetic grease on that uh, gear there. And obviously the, the bottom hook gears that I showed earlier, the all metal hook gears, that will get a good dollop of of our super lube grease. That's just a big tube that'll last me forever. So we uh, got some lube grease right up in there. And all the, the bullet is the feed dog bullet. Kind of hard to see. It's oop, right there. So that little cylinder there was really stuck. So that got a lot of rim oil. Get my focus going here. There we go. So that got a lot of a lot of rim oil right up in there, right down in there, because that. That little spring pulls back, and that's what uh, I can demonstrate it here. You can see that little bullet comes out, and that's got to be lubed. Those really get stuck. It's kind of the same mechanism on a lot of these Japanese machines. Um, yeah, all these little joints here were all pretty stuck. That all got lubricated, so looking pretty good now, and everything's in pretty good shape. Um, we'll do some dusting and cleaning in the shuttle mechanism on the other side. Um, open the hood. Um, the zigzag. We'll test that out. Looks like that's fairly free, but obviously that will get some lubricant. We'll clean out the tensioner. And, uh, yeah. And then Nora's going to completely... That's metal, Nora. I don't know if you know that or not. But... Um, yeah, we'll get that going. All right, we're gonna uh, wind a bobbin here. Um, there's no on-off switch that I can see, so it's basically plug it in and it's on. I got a couple machines that way. Bobbin goes in here. You skip the little thread guide and go into a little tensioner. Turn the clutch out. I have that tight from. Uh, and I was cleaning it, and then so now the now the machine should be disengaged, and click her forward, and there we go. Good. Right out. Make sure you re-engage that so your machine is ready to sew. To put this into the bobbin, clockwise goes into this little thread here. It's just the same as any other class 15 bobbin and there it goes. And that will just snap in there. Okay, we're gonna show just how this thing is threaded. 
so it goes through here. Goes through that tension guide. To this tension guide. And then it goes around the tension guide through that spring and then back down underneath this metal thing and then up through the take up lever. There's one more thread guide right there pops into then in around that needle guide from front to back. So this way and that's it. I'll throw uh do some stitching with this thing. Works pretty well already. I've tested a few out, but I'll just run through. Throw it on a zigzag. Medium. Quick store, not too fast, but backwards. Looks pretty good. I ran through a bunch of stitches already with it, and I got the tension set pretty good now, sitting at four. So, yeah, everything seems to be working, and I just ran out of thread, so we'll just uh, stop it at that. Yeah, really nice machine.